takes a while. Hello, everybody. My name is Rowan. This is my partner, Kim. And today she will be channeling Topia, a hybrid child. So, a big welcome to everybody in the room. Thank you very much for joining us. Roxy, Michelle, Johannes, Wavy Hand, and Bianca. Wavy Hand is who? I think it's Bianca. Oh, it's Dan! Oh. <laughs> I was wondering who it was. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, um, yeah, we're going to get straight into it. So, um, mm. you good? Yes. Yeah. She's very ready. It's been a while. Yes. All right. Thank you all for being here. I know it was short notice, and I know it's really awkward times for many of you. So thank you so much. Um, okay. She, she's well and truly ready. So I'll just bring her straight through, and I'll see you all soon. Hi. How's it going? Oh, I'm really good, thank you. How are you? Wonderful. Ah, we've got a few guests with us today as well. We're doing another one of our webinars. So. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sure you're all aware. Yeah. It was important. That's why I needed to speak to the people too. What was so important? And and I have a message. Could I say that first? Of course. Ah, uh, okay. Hello, everybody. This is Topia. And I have a message and I have some questions too, please. Uh, my message is that this day, that is your day, I got a prize. And my prize was because I learned about being alone and loneliness. So, what happens when our teacher says that we must learn feelings like, like the humans? And the best way for us to learn the feelings is to feel them and because everybody is talking about what you call empathy and so what happened was our teacher said we needed to spend some time where we decided how long we wanted to be alone and then we had to choose another time where we didn't get to say that we had had enough. And that's when the teacher knew and because of the pictures that she was taking, that's when the teacher knew that we were feeling lonely. And so it was very sad. And, and it was something that I really wish didn't happen. But in the end, when I saw my friends again, and that was just your today, I was very happy. I was very happy and I hugged them all very, very, very hard. Because I loved them so much and it wasn't nice being lonely. And so now I want to remember to think about 
how special the people are, my friends are, and the humans are, and when they spend time and they come like this, and we are all together, that it is even more special. And so it's really, really important that on on earth can can you please if you think you see or you know or you feel someone who is lonely please can you just talk to them just even a smile and and make lots of things happier for the lonely people. And I know too, because it started to feel like the loneliness, you just got used to it. And so if I got too used to it, I would spend lots of time being lonely. And it's very hard when you're lonely and so sad. And you think you have to be happy for people to want to be around you. So I felt like I was just being lonely and then the lonely, 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 and the sadder, 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 sadder. And then you feel like you don't want to be with anybody. So it is very complicated. But please. Can all the humans, when they see a lonely person, or please go and find one. Because if they are stuck in their loneliness, they won't come back. So please, please, my message, and my teacher said this was a very good message to tell you to please be on the lookout. She said, on the lookout for lonely people and help them not to be lonely anymore. So, do, do you understand? I understand. Thank you. Who, who was that? This is Michelle. Oh, Michelle. Hi, Topia. Oh, the stickers. <laughs> oh. Can um, you please draw some more? Yes. Oh, I do. I, I sent, well, I have lots and lots of things I've already drawn, so you and... Kim can work out, or I don't know how to work it out, but I have hundreds of drawings. But I would kind of, if you want me to do something special, you can let Kim know um, something specific. Uh, but, but I do want to get back to what you were just sharing, which made me tear up. How long did it, how long did you spend alone before? you started to feel the pain of um, lonely. When I was alone, it was only about five of your hours and then I felt like I don't want to be alone anymore. So the alone time was about five hours. That was the first time or the second yeah. time when you didn't have a choice? That was the first time when we could say, okay, we don't want to be alone anymore. So you were alone with others or just alone Ooh. with yourself? Alone by myself. Okay. Playing Isolation. by myself, yes. And I had my toys, mm -hmm. yes. So, Topia, what I was wondering is that what when you had to do a longer time and you said this is a very grown up observation by the way that um, you found that you could get used to it really easily yeah. how much time how much time do you think passed when you started to feel used to it 
and that it would become hard to reconnect with other people again. It, it was when I had two sleeps. So wow. that would be... Well, that uh, explains it. Two sleeps explains it. Yeah. And then and it started to feel normal. Yeah. Like, that's really interesting. And I, I would I, like... I know a lot of people are lonely in the world and that I think that's what brought tears to my eyes because it is easy we forget it is easy just to smile and say hello and maybe lift their spirit a little bit so thank you so much for your message sweetheart you're welcome I love I you don't, I don't want anybody to feel like that no yeah. It's time to make people happy. There's too many sad ones. Yeah, there's a lot of sad ones here. Yeah. 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 And then my teacher said when she took me out and I was still sad and, and she was a little bit worried and she wanted for me to feel a little bit happy. And so... She let me have some time. Oh, I have another message. I have a friend. This this the teacher let me spend some time away from lessons with the, with my friend. And and I need to tell you about her too. And she's here watching me now. And her name is Mabel. And she's learning how that she can come and visit you too. So she's getting clever enough to come and talk you like this. So I don't know who she will come in. She she might come in, Kim. She might choose someone else, but her name is Mabel. And she's so much fun. And I know the humans will really, really like her. Can you um, describe Maple to us a little bit? Do you mean how she looks? Is she same from the same planet you are? She's the same hybridization? Yes. She's the same hybridization as I am. And do you mean the colour of her hair and those things? Uh, yeah, anything really. Just some like, general descriptions or yeah. anything. Yeah. What's your favourite thing about her? Oh, her hair. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. She has really beautiful hair. It's it's a, a browny colour and it has a honey colour in it. It's it's very pretty and it's part of her hybridized Asian. Honey, interesting. Yes, it's like honey. You it's, know what honey is? Yeah, yeah. Your bees make honey. Uh -huh. You're busy bees. That's <laughs> where busy bees comes from. Yeah, it's she, she has and, and her, her hair. It's a a little bit curly, and her skin is a bit darker than mine because because I. I think I told you, I I am what you call on earth a bit fair. I have light coloured hair and light coloured skin and, and the same eyes and things. And she has that colour hair. Oh, and she has beautiful eyes and they're green. And it's so nice to look in her eyes. She's so beautiful. So, Michelle, if you could draw a picture of her, that would be really, really cool. Okay, how long is her hair? Oh, her hair isn't very long at the moment. It, it's about to her chin. Oh, the sticker, the last sticker. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Kind of like that? It's about that long, but it's a bit longer. 
It's a bit longer than that. Yeah. And she has green eyes. Yeah. Are, are the eyes larger than human eyes? Yes, she has big eyes. Does she have eyelashes and eyebrows? Yes. Yes. Her, her mouth is small. It's a bit smaller. Small. Okay. She speaks a bit like that sometimes. But you stretch sometimes. Mm -hmm. She has she has a nose too. The nose is pretty. Mm -hmm. She's not pretty. She's very pretty. But are you are pretty too, aren't you? <laughs> Thank you. Yes. Do you find humans pretty? Oh yes. Pretty. Yes. Yes, humans are very, very pretty, and the men are very pretty too. Yes, they have every single one has something really, really pretty. So, Topia, in relation to a human um, form, what is the biggest difference? I mean, are is um. Is your head maybe larger and your body smaller, or is it the same? Very we similar. Are, we are smaller all over at the moment. Mm -hmm. We are we are smaller everywhere, and when we are ready to come to Earth, then they will change our DNA, and we mm -hmm. will become what the teacher says is average. Mm -hmm. Every. That's a bummer. <laughs> don't like that. Well, it would be nice if you could just come as you are, but that's okay, I understand. Maybe. Maybe. Because that's what we want. Yes. It, it depends on the humans. Yeah. And that's one reason why I'm allowed to come and visit sometimes. Mm -hmm. Because you will know, and maybe one day you might see me. I'm so excited. Yes, and so are we, and that's why we are working really, 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 really hard. So when we meet you, will you be more grown up, or will yes. the time, time difference, the inconsistencies of time, would that make a difference to how we... We can't come as children. No. They will see us, they will know us. And they're not supposed to. It will be tricky enough when we come, even as adults, and for people not to know that there's something different about us. But, and this is something that all the species and all the galaxies are talking about at the moment, because there's lots of planets that are looking for the hybridizations to be on their planets, not only humans, there's lots of others. And they all want to become part of other planets. So it's something that is different for every planet and it is different for every relation that lives on them. And that reminds me, Another thing I learned was you call your family members your family and you have names like aunties and uncles and cousins and mothers and fathers and brothers and sisters and lots of names like that. But they are all people that you are genetic relates the two. Your DNA is very like each other's. With us on our planet, like like yours, we have lots of different looking species. You call them species. And we don't. We call them relations. 
It doesn't matter if we don't know who they are and it doesn't matter how they look and it doesn't matter if they're big or little. They're all relations and that's the word that we use. Because we are all thinking about being together and loving each other. So we think about each other as relations and then it doesn't matter like on your earth. We do have people with different skins and different bloods and different words on our planet. They're called relations. Is that because everybody is unified under a peaceful, benevolent society? Yes, so that is no why. Fear of meeting people and yes, strangers and what could be done to them or taken advantage of. Is that correct? That is why. Yes, and that happens a lot, lots of planets. Yes. They don't use words that mean they are different to each other, they use words that mean they are the same. Sure, they sure, they bring the unity rather than the separatism. Yes, yeah. yes, and that's very important. It's true with all the, all the planets talking about this thing, about being one and how to come together and, and to un, unify the, that this is something where some of them are wanting to change their language in this way too. So what would happen if one of your members of the society you live among, what, what, what happens if they, uh, they started getting negative violence? Um, what would happen to that individual? It doesn't happen very often at all. It is not something that is very, very even spoken about when it does happen. It is talked about a little bit amongst the adults. And in, in our class, the only reason I can tell you that it does happen is because we had to be told that because we will be coming to Earth and that happens here. Yeah. It, on our planet, when somebody does something like that, they are taken to a special place where they are given special time and mm -hmm. special ideas and they talk and people just listen and then they let them empty like a cup of your water. Uh-huh. They let them empty and if they are feeling angry, they let them be angry and they let them speak the words they want to say because there's always a reason why they're angry. Oh, of course, sure. Yeah. So, Same on this planet as well. There's a, they are, they are, there is a reason they believe that they choose to act in that way. So yeah. I was trying to find out if there's any clues or anything we could adapt towards our future systems which could help that. Yeah. Because at the moment what we do on this planet is we get everybody who is violent, who's suffering from a mind disease called violence, and we put them in one place with all the other people that are violent, and they just become more violent. Oh. So we have a big problem here with our systems of helping or correcting people who are unable to fit into a benevolent society. But that do they get lonely? Oh, I'm sure they do. Yeah, they're locked away in cells. and oh. Yeah, it's very sad. It's a very sad system. Oh. But hopefully that will be changed by the time you arrive. Yes. Maybe that's a job one of us will work on. But the ones, the ones that happen on our planet, once, once they empty their cup, then they can be filled back up with something much more kinder. Mm -hmm. Because these people, they need kindness. Sure, love and yes. kindness. Yes, and it's just the things they are doing that is causing problems. It's not what is in their heart. 
It's two different things. One second. They might be. Oh, okay. Yeah, please carry on. Yeah. They might be alone and still not feeling like they are with people. And that's when the problems can happen because nobody is caring enough. So it doesn't happen very often. But when it does happen, that's how we fix it. And it fixes it every time. That's beautiful, Topia. Thank you. Oh, you're welcome. I, do I know you? Hi, Topia. This is Wendy. I'm so excited to finally talk to you this way. Uh, and hi. I wanna, hi. And I think we talk to each other sometimes. Um, I wanted to thank you for bringing such a beautiful message about the difference between lonely and being alone because um, yes a lot of people just need a little smile or something to make them feel like they're a part of everything and um, and I think we understand that the way you guys are is that you're just one big family right yeah yes it's just one big wonderful family and um, something that we are learning here as humans is to be alone and to understand that being alone doesn't mean you have to be lonely and that you could be because sometimes being alone we use meditation and we're alone so that we can find wonderful beings like you because that's the only way we can talk to you is if we're quiet did you find when you were in your alone time did you have any kind of um, special thoughts or feelings that you thought about that maybe you didn't think about before because you were alone? Yeah. Yeah? Uh? I, I, yeah. I, I was thinking so, 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 so hard about everything the teacher had said about what might happen when we start to feel lonely. And for me, one of the things was thinking about what you call spirit. Yeah. Okay. And, and that what, was one of the things that I thought that that might help me feel a little bit okay. Very nice. See, that's what we do is we try to find that place where we can connect with what we call spirit too. And it's our place of, a place of not loneliness. It's a place of happiness. Um, did you feel happy when you felt that? Yes, it was very helpful because I could feel how much they loved me and how much they are always with me. Yes, thank you. And that's what I was wondering. Um, if That's where I was kind of wondering is if you were able to feel that the way we feel that and that sometimes when we're alone, that's the time when we feel not lonely at all, but we feel very, very close to all of the wonderful beautiful spiritual energies around us and so I think that's what I was wondering is, is does that then make you understand that we and you are never alone yes yes and also when I came out when the teacher said it was time to come out and my feeling of being sad it stayed for a little while. My teacher wanted me to be looked after very well because she said that the important thing is what you are doing in that moment and that spirit is very special and yes, we do what you call meditation as well. But at that time, she also told me that I needed to let my eyes, let my eyes see my friends and see their hearts and see their smiles and then let me feel it. And then that made me feel love with my friends 
It's love with my spirit. Oh, that's so oh, that's beautiful. So beautiful. Yeah. Yes. Yes. And did you know that when you, you know feel that, that, you feel that for them that they feel it back? back? Yes. Oh, yes. That's wonderful. Yeah. Because, because, and and some of us have done this, and some of us still need to do it. But when we when we come back to our friends and we've had this lonely time and we love each other so much more because of it, it's a growing. It, it's my teacher says it's a journey. It's a human journey. Oh, and another message. My teacher said it was okay to tell you that she has lived on earth and she worked in what was called your education systems. Wow. Yes. And that's one reason why she knows so much. And she's very important. She's she's very special. And it's a bit sad because when she had to leave, there was people that she loved and there was people that loved her. So she understands very much that sadness. And when she left, she had to pretend that she disappeared. And so... Oh, that must have, must have been very lonely, lonely for, her. for her. Yes. Yes, and she talks to us about that. And sometimes she cries. And so that's one reason why one of the things she wants us to know is how the humans can love each other to be happy. And and she, she calls it love each other to be happy. That's beautiful, Topia. Thank you. You're welcome. Did you know I wanted to share something with you about your friend Mabel? Yes. Did you, did you know, I don't know if you know what an acronym is, um, but if you take the first letter of every, um, if you take the letter of every um, letter in Mabel and it makes a word that sometimes people say that the name Mabel means mothers always bring extra love. Uh, <laughs> that's really nice. So maybe you could tell Mabel that. She heard you. Oh, good. Hi, Mabel. I love you. I love you, Topia. Thank you for coming to visit today. Thank you for having us. She is smiling. She likes that. <laughs> I love that name, and I love your name, too. Oh, thank you. <laughs> and, and can you give your mommy a big hug for me? Uh-huh. Okay. Yeah. We Thank do you. lots of that now. We do lots of that now. And the kisses. Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. I love you. Mm. Okay. Hello, Topia. Dan? This is Dan. Oh. Hi. Dan, hi. How are you? I'm well. How are you? Oh, I'm very good. I would like a report from your last play times. What were some of the last things you've done? Last time we spoke, you were going to do stilts that day. <laughs> that was funny. <laughs> and I Love know you did us. slinkies. Yeah, you did slinkies and stilts. Have you yeah. done this? Have you done the spirographs and those things yet? No. How did you know? How did I know what? Spirographs are coming. Yes. Oh, yay. That's one of my favorites. Yes. 
Yes, lots of people, lots of big people on the ship know about that. Really? So, yeah. I I must ask. I didn't ask them yet. You reminded me. Why oh. do they like them so much? We have been doing what you call fine motor skill exercises. Mm, okay. Yes, and so our playtime has been about doing those kinds of fine motor skill exercises, that looking at your fingers and and learning to use your fingers. And so one of the things that we use to do that, we call them something different. Did you call them pipe cleaners? Oh, yes, the pipe cleaners. Yeah. And they're lots of colors. Yes, and you can bend them, and you can make all kinds of uh -huh. figures yeah. and shapes. and. Yeah, and then you could wind them around your fingers, and yep. you can make people, and you can make mountains and pyramids, and anything know, you like. I know back in the day, many, many, many friends made their little friendship rings out of little pipe cleaners, and some of them wore them until all the fuzz fell off. I remember those, Dan. <laughs> <laughs> friendship. Okay, uh. Yeah. Oh, go ahead. Talk. You can talk about the friendship rings. I, I'm not sure what you mean. Well, they would just take the pipe cleaner and wrap it around their, their finger like a ring, and then they would make a ring out of it. And then they would do that with another friend, and they, they would form a bond and say, okay, these rings are our friendship rings. Uh -huh. And then they would just leave them on, and every time they noticed their ring, they would remember their friendship. And, and, and some kids did that for a really, really long time. But they would wear their pipe cleaners until all the fuzz fell off. It's just kind of like a present you would give your friend, like you would design something maybe with your pipe cleaners and then give it to her or him and vice versa. Or and they would make oh, you one. Nice. It's just like making each other presents. But what do you do with, when you have to use your fingers for something else? Well, you'd have to take it off so it wouldn't get wet or whatever. You try to protect it as long as you can because they're fragile, but yeah. You would save them. You would take them off sometimes and put them in a special place and save them with all your other little things that you saved. And and do, do they go on a special finger? No, I don't think they had a specific preference. Just whatever finger was handy that day. Not like your wedding. Not like a no. wedding ring. But some people, some would do the wedding finger just to show that it was even extra more special, but it wasn't a requirement. It could be any any finger. Yeah, Michelle I thought that was good. <laughs> All the fingers are special, Topia. All the fingers are special. <laughs> yep. Oh, I like you laughing. <laughs> now I'm kind of wondering if even toes were out of the question. I think some may have think, even made toe rings out of the question. I think it could be table. a necklace. It doesn't have to be a ring. It could be anything you want it to be. It could hang yeah. on the wall. It could be a bracelet. They make friendship bracelets uh -huh. as well. They make those out of strings, though, usually. Oh, you do know what we did? No. We all made it. We all got two, two, two pipe cleaners, and then we made a circle out of one and then we wound the other one round and round mm -hmm. around it twisting mm -hmm. and, and then it, all of us in the class our teachers said we could put them all together and so we attached them to each other and they made a big long chain and it was Beautiful colors. Mm -hmm. That is very cool. Yes. That was lots of fun, that one. Mm -hmm. yeah. have, have you 
guys been introduced to sewing with like a needle and thread or yarn and thread also for fine motor skill development? We we used wool. Uh huh. That was for something different. It wasn't for fine motor skills. Uh huh. The, the wool we used because it was about feeling textures. Mm. What did you think about the wool? Well, the different wools feel different. Mm -hmm. And and the, there was some that if it was against your skin, because we put it on our hands, then we rub it there and then rub it there and then feel it with our fingers and then we put it on our cheeks. Mm -hmm. We feel, felt it in lots of different ways. Mm -hmm. And so then that's how we decided which ones we liked and which mm -hmm. ones we didn't. And most of us liked the softer ones. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that we used wool then, but that was instead of using material, other things you would have, like like you have cotton. Right. So yes. you use like wool instead of cotton. Yeah, of just to okay. just to to feel the difference and also to to see how these things can be turned into clothes that people on earth wear. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Topia, did you see the animal from which the wool comes from? Not yet, no. Because we all wanted to know where it came from. But the teacher said that is for another day because we're going to be doing a long time learning more about your animals. Oh, very exciting. We have a lot of fun with our animals here. I love the animals very much on Earth. It's going to yeah. be very exciting for you to explore the animals. They're a lot of fun. Yes, a lot of the boys really like that idea. Topia, have you been by to see Ringo lately? Yes. Is she okay when I come now? I haven't noticed you coming through her. So you're either coming very quietly or you're coming at times I'm not seeing you. I coming because I heard her. And I didn't want to hurt her again. No, well, the first, it was like the first or second time she was, oh, my bird's outside. Um, the first or second time it, it startled her, but I think she's getting more and more used to it now. When you when you come in slower, she doesn't get as startled, and I think she's more used to you now. So, but I haven't even noticed really anything in her. Yeah, that's good because I have been coming. Okay. And I then. also also I did go to see Alex. And oh, and, did you? Yes, and and. I I looked around and and I didn't want to be rude, but I was looking for the doll. Do you remember she bought uh -huh. me a doll? Oh yeah, yeah, I do remember. Yes, yeah, she posted the the crochet doll. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and and I I was wondering if maybe she could she could send a picture. Please send it. Send it to Kim so that Kim can get it to you. Oh yeah, yes. Okay, all right. Then she can maybe email it or send it in a message or something, or send it via Skype. Okay, I'll I'll let Alex know to, to send that picture again. Thank you. Oh, and, you're welcome. And and, and Jillian. Jillian, yes, in the UK, Jillian. Yes, she she said that I could go to her classroom. Yes, that's right, she did. Uh, yes, and so I spoke to the teacher, and the teacher said that we can all do it if we are very, very specially behaved. And we can mm. all go one at a time. 
and Jillian said, I can come any time to her classroom, and she said, I can come any time and see her pets, but I have to find out if it's okay if the other kids come to see the school. Okay, so what we'll do is get in touch with Jillian and find out if it's okay, and then I'll have Jillian contact him as well, okay? Okay. And also the teacher said to make sure that it's a time when the children are very busy because otherwise the children might feel that we are there. Okay. Well, you guys can sort that all out and, and figure out what's best for you and, yeah. and find the best way to visit and pick up on things there in the classroom. Yeah. Perfect. It's all righty. Perfect today. <gasps> Oh, happy birthday! Happy birthday! It's Jillian's birthday. Do you sing it's a Jillian's song? birthday today? Oh, yeah. When, uh, someone has a birthday. Do you have a special song on your planet? No. No. Oh. No, because that's a quiet time. Mm. Birthdays are the time that we spend with our motherling and our fatherling, if he is willing. And it's very quiet time, and you talk about what you have learned and what you want to learn and what you want to happen in your heart and in your life. It's not like the birthdays that you have. We have times like your birthdays when we've done very good things and our teacher says we can have a party. Beautiful. Yeah. Sometimes I spend my birthday that way too. <laughs> yeah, it's very special. Very, very special because everybody knows that it's a time when that person is being very honored. And and because everybody around, all the relations around, they know when it's a birthday and they know when it's a time to speak to their God and to each other and send blessings and it is honourable to have a birthday because it's honourable to have life. That is a beautiful explanation, Shapia. Thank you. You're welcome. Is there anything else? Anyone want to just say hi? Yeah. Hi. Hi. Hello, Sophia. My name is Bianca. Nice to meet you. Oh, hi, Bianca. That's a pretty name. Thank you. Your name's pretty also. Thank you. You're a very sweet girl. You're very nice. You're very lovable. You're very cute. Oh, Thank you. I'm sure you are lovable too. <laughs> <laughs> Topia, it's Michelle. I want to ask you a question about the color of your hair and your eyes also. Yeah. Yeah. Did what color? What color? What color is your hair? My hair is almost a white. White, okay. And yeah. is, it, is, is it as long as the picture I drew? And does yeah. it have any curls? Yes. Oh, my goodness. When I saw that, I thought, oh, Michelle, you are so clever. But is that what your hair looks like? Yes. Okay, the good. Color, the color is a very light color, but it look it would look almost like white in your sunlight. Okay, beautiful. What color are your eyes, sweetie? My eyes are blue, and 
They have a little bit of violet in them. Oh. Mm. It's changing as I get older. Mm -hmm. Yeah. From, from just blue to having violet in them also, or? The other way. The other way. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And that's the hybridization thing. Right. And you said you're about up to our knees and tall? I'm a How little bit you? bigger. I'm a little bit bigger now. Okay. All right. Yeah. I'm going to draw a picture for you and Mabel. Okay? Okay. Thank you. Okay. I love you, sweetie. Oh, I love you too. <laughs> oh, Topia, what's your favorite thing to wear? Clothes? Yes. Or any kind of clothes or accessories? I like the most anything that is the color yellow. Oh, I love the color yellow. That's the color of our sunshine. Yeah. Cause, cause Dan told me and Sarah told me that we could do dress ups. And so oh, I love that. Yeah. And so we we got back to the teacher and we told the teacher and and Sarah told me I could be the sun. I could dress up like the sun. And so I do that sometimes, but I like I like yellow. So I wear yellow most of the time when I am busy and I might be making a mess with the kids, then I wear something that is yellow. But it's like it's it's like it has arms and legs and and uh, middle and it's all one piece and so it's very easy to put it on and to take it off and if it gets messy you can clean up very fast so it's all without Buttons. It doesn't have your buttons, and it doesn't have your ways of doing up clothes. Not bows and and uh, oh, Velcro. Not Velcro. None of those things. The material in the in these clothes, it, it's kind kind of. What you would call has magnets on it, and so the 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 clothes have magnets to do it up. Ah, uh, yes, I understand. Yes, that's when we're doing our earth thing. Hey, Topia, this is Roxy. I have a question, sweetie. Yeah. Roxy. How are you? Yes. Hi. I'm, Hi, I'm good, thank you. How are you? I'm wonderful. Thank you first for coming and sharing with us. Most excellent. You're welcome. So my question is... <clears throat> Well, you'll have to forgive me of my ignorance, and I have a few foundation questions I need to ask. Are you currently in the third density incarnation? Is that right? Yes. The hybrid is third density? Yes. Okay. So in that, the paradigm of your scoped reality, in other words, what you're aware of, and then let's pinpoint it to the idea of being alone. Here as humans, we are coveting. We don't realize we're part of the one. You're birthed into an idea realizing, taught from birth, if you would. I don't know how forgetful you are upon birth to realize what you are in this incarnation as you're growing. Your family unit idea of everyone being one and celebrating the diversities therein, which you obviously do, are you truly aware, as humans are, 
according to our paradigm, our forgetful state, to understand what it is to be alone mm -hmm. and what it means to be truly from our perspective, which I know that you can feel that, but does your paradigm equate to the same feeling of what it is to be alone? Because when we forgot, we don't know there's anything else out there. I'm yeah. curious if your paradigm knows, even if you're alone and you feel lonely because you have no physical contact, no physical idea of representation in front of you, can you feel other people, other entities, other of yourselves on your planet and commune with them in a way to where you are not truly alone. Yes. Make sense? I understand. I think I understand your question. We, when we are born, we do not forget. What okay, very good is we are learning how to be humans. So there are things that other children that come from our relations, they have different experiences and they have all kinds of special things going on around them. For the ones of us who are on this ship, and on this colony, these kinds of things that the others know all about and they're not things that we are encouraged to do or encouraged to use because our job is okay. different. So okay. we are learning that we know, need to know the human way. So when we come to Earth, we will be able to communicate with each other no matter where we are but it is something that we may not tell anyone that we can do and it is something that we must keep very secretive until the time comes when the humans can be told then it will be like us going back to school and then spending time learning how to not be just human. Humans are very special. They have things about them that other species, other relatives don't. But it is the same way, the other way around. They all have special things. But for me and my friends, our special thing is to learn how to be human. And that right. is what our teacher looks at when she decides if we are learning well. I would think it would be if you are coming here certainly to be what you would call teachers of, uh, let's call it the universe, might as well. So compassion to understand from the human perspective as your teacher did what it is to be human, then you can empathize with humans in these feelings of separation and show them a different way. So that seems to be where you're going with that. When we come to Earth, we don't know yet when or how. What we right. do know is that we need to be ready. When the time comes, we need to be ready. There's going to be changes. And when the of time course. comes, we need to be ready. We can teach if we are being taught to come to earth and teach. Some are and others of us, we are not. We are not meant to be teachers. We are meant to exist and, and become invisible 
in in our hybridization. So our DNA will be modified so that we cannot be seen as things other than a human unless there is another relation that we see on the planet. And then gotcha. we can communicate with them in the special ways, but not with normal humans. Okay. Excellent. Thank you so much. You're welcome. You use big words, Roxy. <laughs> <laughs> well, I know I know that you are most uh, most capable of understanding these large words because your vocabulary is big. <laughs> Just because of your awareness. You you gave me lots of practice. Thank you. Yay. You're welcome, darling. Are you I excited? Hope I got it right. What's that, sweetie? I hope I got it right. Oh, you most certainly did. Oh, good. Thank you. I tell my teacher. <laughs> Hi, Roxy. Hi, Topia. Can I ask a question? This is Karen. How are you? Hi, Karen. I'm good, thank you. How are you? Yes, very good. Thank you very much. Um, I, I Just to, to elaborate on what Roxy was asking, does this mean, based on your description, that the beings on Earth will never know that the hybrids are here for a certain amount of time? Is that, is that the point? Is the point to blend in so well that there's no knowing? There, the, there, there are aliens that you call aliens that are already living on Earth around you. And right. nobody knows. That one of the reasons is because they are learning about the humans. Mm -hmm. They come. They come to your earth to learn, right? Because there are things about people living on the earth that other relations want to know and want to learn. We in our colony on our ship, when we come, we hope, and we meditate many times on the humans being able to say to us oh we love you we know you are an alien and we love you that is what we want more than anything so but, that, but that's happening on your planet I mean on your ship not in on earth that what we are learning is happening on our ship. Yes. Okay. The ones who are on your earth now, they are learning by doing. Does that make sense? That they are learning by doing? Yes. Makes, makes perfect sense. Yes. And we are learning by our teacher. It's different ways of learning. When we come, we want to say we are here. It's timing. It's not the time, it's time. So we hope it will happen. We hope we will be able to say, Oh, hi. It's us. And we're from Orana and we love you a lot and we know all about you. And we hope that that will be okay. And we will seem so human that it won't worry some of them and some wouldn't even believe us anyway. <laughs> 
I think that a lot of people have the idea with hybrid children is that when they come to Earth, they're just going to be running to their mothers and their fathers. But no. that's that's the idea a lot of people have, that they personally have one hybrid child. But if you're truly a hybrid, you could have theoretically many mothers and many fathers mm -hmm. that you're a hybrid of. Yes. So, so the idea that a ship is going to land and a lot of children are going to spill out and go running to their mothers and the fathers is really not what's going to happen. That is not what our colony says, no. No. I see Rowie in his uh, background nodding and shaking his head at the same time. <laughs> well, imagine but, um, it's going to be 10, 15 years until this contact happens. So they're yeah. not going to be killed. Well, I, th I mean, there's really some true. people that there's some uh, people who are saying that the children are held sort of in a stasis and they're not allowed to grow and develop. But I find that to be a, I don't know if that's true or or how long can you really hold someone in that kind of stasis, you know? Or if you're able to travel in time, then right. uh, you can go to any location when it's when it's when when when, when it's ready when it's the right time and. I'm sure they'll be the right age. We're looking at a very linear view. Is that the way? Is is your life very linear, Tipia? Linear. Linear in a straight line. So we experience time. Let's say we started this uh, one hour ago. It's now been an hour of linear time, a constant flow of a dimensional time. And that's what we call linear in a straight line. Mm. Our time is a little bit different. How do you experience time? Well, because there's we can move, like what you said, we can move to faster to places and we can move slower to places. So because of that, we can change the time. It's tricky. It's tricky. If we want to go somewhere very fast, for it to be fast, then the timing needs to be fast. The time needs to go fast. Mm -hmm. And if we want to go somewhere slow, then the time needs to be slow, and then we go slow, and the time is slow. So we make the time. But Tapia, are you growing, are you growing up? up? Are you yes. getting older? Yes. So, so when we see we... you, you won't be a little girl anymore. You'll be an older, you'll be at least a teenager or a young woman, right? Yes. Yes. Yes, the hope is that I will be there and I will look like one of your 30 years. Your 30? Okay. Okay. That's how I will look. Mm. Okay. Well, bring it's pictures of when you were little. <laughs> <laughs> Michelle can draw me. Yeah. <laughs> Topia, I, feel... I have. Yeah. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. Oh no, it's okay. Uh, two things. I wanted to uh, make a statement. One that. I would like for it to be known that I can be a being that's on the planet that can be approached by the hybrids that are already here, and it would be nice if they could approach me and say, hey, Dan, you know, we're some of the beings that you asked about, so I could be maybe one of the first people that can, you know, greet them as themselves, you know what I mean? Yeah. And then, um, yeah so that they can come and be themselves. So a person that can be one of the first people they can be themselves with. Say, so, hi, Dan, you know, we're whatever kind of hybrid, and um, you said you'd like to chat someday, so here we are, kind of thing. I thought that that would be really, really neat. And then also if you put the word out for the ones that are already here. If they would um, like somebody that they can make themselves known to, that, you know, that can, they can chat with and whatever, have discretion whatever, because I'm, I'm, I'm not out to expose anything. I just 
think it would be neat for them to have somebody to talk to. I'd like to chat with them too. There's there's lots of hybrid questions. Yeah, Bianca also says she'd like to be a hybrid greeter as well <laughs> in California. So if there's any like around in my area or whatever, I think it'd be really, really neat. And maybe that could even be a thing with Hukalo members if they'd like to um, be hybrid greeters. Yeah, so I'd like to put that out there if that's okay. If you could let everybody know that yeah. um, that would be okay with me. That would be really, really fun. And then we could go out and talk about hybrid things. Really, that would just be neat like take your hybrid friends to the park and just talk about hybrid things and find out all these questions like we ask you know what was it like growing up on your ship what was it, what were some of the things you learned you know what was some of the neat stuff you know did you play with the spirograph too you know what happened who were your toys you know and stuff it would just be really really neat I think that would be a lot of fun and then we could greet them and then they could be more accepted because it, there seemed to be a connotation that they do experience a little bit of loneliness being away from their kind, but if if they could understand that there are people who are uh, not tolerant but accepting of, of them for who were my toys. My toys were the Slinky and Teddy Bears and Big Tops and Rock'em Sock'em Robots and all them other kind of weird things. Yeah, because it was the 60s, so that's what the 60s toys I had, electric trains and things. But anyway, yeah, to be uh, a greeter, yeah, and let them know. I think that would be really, really, really cool. And if we could send that energy out and let the invitation be out, to, okay, here's a friendly person. So if you get on the planet and you're around this person, you can speak to this person kind of thing. You know what I mean? They can say, yeah. okay, they can, they can trust them. They can trust these certain people, and these people can be approached, you know, yeah. um, and be safe, still stay safe. That, that would be so neat. And then we can go have human hybrid conversations. That would just be wonderful, just like we're doing today. It's so fun. It's so exciting. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, Will. Will says he has to go and he sends his love. What anyway. would you call, um, we call Earth. We could call Earth Earthians, if you wanted. What would you call people from your planet? Or a, a right... The planet is called Orana. Orana. Yes. Oranans? Yes. Would that be In your fair? language, yes. Oranans? Oranans, yeah. Oranians. Oranans, let's stick with Oranans. I think that's, mm -hmm. that's a pretty good one. So, how many, are you uh, able to tell us how many Oranans are presently on Earth? Oh, on Earth. Oh, I, be, I might have mixed you up a bit. There's, there, there is some from Orana. There's only four. Four, okay. There's some from other colonies. There's lots and lots and lots of colonies. Well, other Oranan colonies or no, not colonies just from... Orana. Yeah, yeah. I was wondering what, mm. what, what, how many from your planet precisely? And, and we all talk. All the big people, they all mm -hmm. talk. And the people who are the, the relations of the ones that are on the earth, and they stay in contact with them. But they're not always from Orana. They come from lots of different galaxies. Sure, sure. We, yeah, that's it's a it's a very big universe. Yeah. Universe. And there's lots of lots of planets too, like Earth, but they're not Earth, and they are using different hybrids. That different species, mm -hmm. and that they're using different hybrid DNA for that planet and what they want to achieve on that planet. So, do the Oranans have a special ability or something very unique that no other species has in the universe, or that you are aware of? Yes, at, at least in our galaxy, it is our ability to feel like a human. Not not all relations are able to feel like a human does. We we can be taught. Mm -hmm. We can be taught what we would feel if we were not taught. Lots of the time is just happy. To, to learn to come to to Earth, there's lots of feelings that we must learn. And we can learn them because we have the hybrids. 
and we know how to make the human hybrids very special so that we can feel like the human. Beautiful. Thank you, Tiffany. Yeah. You're welcome. Does anyone else have any more questions? Yeah, real, yeah, quick, real quick. Was it was the the, N, uh, the other, uh, other entity, entity that wants that to wants come through on Chelling? Was it Mabel or Maple with a P? Or Mabel with a B? A B. A B. So Mabel. So okay. Okay. Yeah. That's an Yeah. 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 <laughs> She's gonna pitch that. For oh me. no. <laughs> So You're going to voice my you... kids coming down going, yeah. 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 It'll be like, <laughs> that's how you'll know who it is. Um, all the little, all those 30 year old hybrids are walking around going, booyah. Um, <laughs> so, I was wondering if you could spell your, um, your plant, your planetary system or I don't even know if it's your ship or your star area it it sounds like Orion to me but is it can you spell it for me please Orania can you spell Orania oh Orana it's Orana spell it R A N A okay thanks perfect a galaxy the, the galaxy. The same as our Milky Way. That's the galaxy's name. No, that's the no. planet's name. The galaxy. That's the planet the name. Oh, okay. The Earth doesn't know about that galaxy yet. Okay. Is that because the galaxy is not visible, or we're not on the same vibration? Uh, it's both. Oh, okay. It's not that. Okay. Which is both, right. <laughs> <laughs> so, I have one question for you, Topia. Are you excited about coming to feel what it feels like to live on Earth? Yes. Yes, because I know all the things to do, and I'm learning all the things to do for people on Earth to be happy. That's very exciting. Yeah, I would like to come to Orana and just be happy all the time. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's not. It's very nice because one of the reasons Orana is very nice and that I could talk to you about the spirits is because mm -hmm. Orana and the spirits, they stay connected very closely. Yes. And so they stay in a certain range of feeling. That's beautiful. Yes, it's very peaceful. Yes, sounds Thanks. very lovely. Oh, and also I would like to extend to you, and anytime you want to come visit, you and or your friends, I am open to that. So. You're very kind. Thank you so much. We okay, will, well. we will, if we are allowed. We will definitely come to see you when we get here. Can I ask you a question? Hi. Yeah. I'd like to ask you about spirit and source and your relationship. Yes. Are you able to? We call it a, a veil. So as we experience our human. Uh, condition, you could say. We cannot see the spirits around us. We cannot see um, much apart from our 3D uh, existence. And what's your relationship and abilities to interact with spirits and source? When we are born, we know. We don't forget. We are encouraged to remember. Mm -hmm. And there's lots of ways that I use to encourage us to remember. And also, when we are conceived, we are encouraged to remember that. That is very important because if we remember that, then we know where we came from and we know why we came. And so while we are being 
being grown and while we are waiting to be born all the time all the time we are being asked to remember 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 there is a chant that is done there is meditation that is done there is lights used some of the lights that you can't see yet but you will there are sounds that are used there are lots of things and when our children are conceived it is very deliberate in time and in space and who and where everything is very important mm -hmm. and it all helps for remembrance mm -hmm. so when we grow we are encouraged we watch our own motherlings and fatherlings and relations we watch them talk to their spirits and they can reach to source and they treasure their reach to source mm -hmm. so they honor that and it's not unusual on on Orana for people to be communicating lots with the spirit realm because they just have not forgotten so when somebody transitions let's say a human will call it a death mm -hmm. some when somebody transitions into the spirit or wherever they go Mm. you are able to then understand that they haven't really left yes. and they've just gone to somewhere else and you're yes. still able to contact them and yes. commune. Yeah. yeah. That's lovely. Thank you. Wow. I have a question. How are you feeling? What's I'm... your, uh, to, to be, real quick, what's your average lifespan? How long do you guys choose to incarnate as far as linear years upon Earth? If you can equate that. Living on your Earth? No, no. How long do you stay incarnated before you transition? What is the average lifespan is what we call it and yeah. what you would call human years? Yes. In human years? In yeah. human years, see, sometimes there is a choice. Sometimes on Orana, people decide that they are ready to go back to spirit. Gotcha. Sometimes okay. so it happens. It happens because of uh, two people who love each other very much, and they decide it's time to go, so they go together. It's it's very very about the choice but about 200 of your earth years would be around the time that most of the bigger people would say they are ready to go back and is that because of all awesome. age? yes it, it, it is a bit like humans because the humans bodies get get tired and they can get sick and things like that. We don't have so much being sick but we have some that do get tired uh -huh. and they don't think that they want to be on a rana anymore and that they want to go somewhere else. Uh -huh. And they might think, oh, I will leave a rana now and I will get ready to come to Earth mm -hmm. yeah. or somewhere else. So, yeah. So it is about the toys. Uh, mm -hmm. What did you Very say? Very good. It's about the toys. When you're done playing, you move on. Yeah. Huh. There you go. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Beautiful. Oh, go ahead, Roxy. I'm sorry. No, I just said beautiful. Very good. Go ahead. I had a question, Topia. Um, this is Wendy again. Um... I, I'm a teacher, um, I'm with the hybrid children a lot, and I'm on the ships, and I was wondering um, also as a, as a hybrid mom as well as a human mom, I wanted to ask you something about um, when you were talking about learning about feelings. 
on the ships and on Earth, um, I was, well, okay, let me change my question. I was wondering, what would you most want to know about um, either Earth or time on Earth? What would you like to learn on the ship? What could I teach here or there to help the hybrid children here on Earth? What, what could I tell you? That would help you as a mom. What could I help you? What could I help teach you on the ship that would help you more here, and in connecting with us all the time? Yeah. I like to I like to speak galactic languages with the children. Um, yeah. That's my way of connecting to many of you. Um, is there something more that you'd like to learn about us, or as moms, human moms? Is there something that we can share with you? Yes, yes, there is always, always questions from people on our ship, from the humans and the Syrians, the other hybridizations. There's always lots of questions and one of them is that you, you taught me about hugs and kisses and that they are very important. That is one thing. It, it is to touch each other with love, with your hands, or with 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 your lips when you kiss. Things of of what you call affection, and when when we are we are hybrid, and when we are kissed or we we are hugged, our auric fields change, and so does all of what you would call our vital signs. They all change. The other thing that we do talk about, and sometimes it can be a bit challenging for the big people, and I only know this because I was with my motherling at one of her meetings, is that gravity is something that is very changeable. Gravity on Earth has very much to do with the amount that people eat or they don't eat or how much they drink or how connected they ground themselves in that word that's groundy and there's lots of things that can be different and so gravity is different for everybody and on the ship they do their best to make a gravity that is like what you have on earth we don't need gravity on Rana like you have it so strong on Earth. So that's something else, is to maybe talk about how things get heavy. How do you, what makes things what you call heavier? And how do you make things heavy? And how does gravity help you? Wow. And how does it harm you? And all those different things about gravity. Very good. Thank you for that information. You know, sometimes since we live here, we we call it taking it for granted, where we sort of stop paying attention to it because we're so used to it. And so sometimes we forget about the things that are so simple that might be of interest to you for that would be helpful for you to come here. Um you know, to navigate in our environment. So yeah, so gravity is something that, you know, I really didn't even think about um, talking about, so I appreciate that very much. Um, sometimes I actually invite the children into my awareness um, when I'm doing very simple things like making a sandwich or washing the dishes or um, doing the laundry because sometimes I feel like those are the sorts of things that you sometimes are interested in because sometimes I feel like somebody's with me saying, oh, can you show me how to do that, you know? Um, mm. So th thank you. Yeah, sometimes we forget it's the simple things, and that's what I was wondering, if the kinds of things you'd like us to share with you. Yes, that would be very helpful, I think, because it was my motherling, Vanida, and she was with all of the other 
uh, big people on the ship and some of them have a small piece of hybridization. And it's something that they weren't very sure about how to make it the same as Earth because we are all so different and you are all so different. And they were deciding how they would teach us. So I, I accidentally heard that. But I remembered it. And I think it will be something that will be talked about with people Excuse me. With people like you uh, that can talk about these things with the children, and and it can be learned about, and the the big people will talk to you too, because they need to find the answers. So the big people will come to you as well and ask questions to lots of you. Yes, thank you so much. I thank you for that. I have a question. It's been about an hour and a half now. We're able to. Yeah, I was going to ask Ro if she needs some water. She's okay. If it, I have voice. Okay. All right. Well, is there any questions? Anything yeah. you want to find out from? us from Earth. Yes, I have, have some really beautiful people in the room right now. Yeah. You might be able to help. Um, is there anything you, you want to ask the, uh, the the group that's with us right now? Yes. Because I love you all and I want something to remember you all by. I would like to know what your favorite color is. Well, mine's blue. 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 A special blue? No, I just love blue. Any any hue of blue is fine. Any shade of blue. Hmm. Okay. I love all blues. Very light blues. Anybody else? Purple. What's Purple. That was Bianca. That was Bianca. If you say your name as well, then Bianca. she remember who you are. This oh, is yeah. Wendy. This is Wendy Tupia. Yes. Well, I have indigo blue and deep purple. Those are kind of my favorites. Those two. Let's see with Roy and Bianca. <sighs> okay, I remember. Thank you. Anyone else? This is Michelle, and I love cornflower blue. Cornflower blue. That's a beautiful blue. Yes, I will. I will put it on the picture for you so that you can see what color it is. Is it like your sky? Um, sometimes it's like a sky. It's a kind of a light blue, but not a really light blue. I it's a will... very special blue. Uh, okay. I will so, find that one. Yeah. I'll put some in your... I don't know what color are your eyes. Are your eyes like dark blue or light blue or mixed blues? Yeah, the, the violet and the blues. If you, if you look at the blues... If you look at the blues on some of your flags, okay, that kind of blue with with the violet, like your violet flowers. Is it like violet within the blue, or a circle by itself of violet? At at the moment, it looks like it's going to come from the outside and go in. To the out, the outside has violet. Yeah, and it's coming inward. Beautiful. Yeah, oh, from <gasps> the blue. Oh, that's so beautiful. Mm -hmm. Amazing. So, anybody else um, would like to uh, share their favorite color with uh, Sophia before she leaves? Uh, can you hear me? I have a question. Let's that. Can you hear me? 
sweet spring bar. That's the yeah, well, here, I hear you, Jasmina. Okay, cool. Okay, I didn't hear it before. Oh, I don't hear Jasmina. Hi. Hi. Oh, you Jasmina. don't mind? Can you hear her, Rui? I'm... No, I can't. Oh, she's yeah. She's been. She talked. She said she had a question, and I didn't know if you heard her. So I wanted to put that in there that she jumped in. I didn't know if you could hear her. Yeah. Oh. No, I can't. Stupid. She seems unmuted, but she she looks muted on her end. Oh, that's bizarre. Yeah, that is a bit strange. Maybe she Am I the her. only one that can hear her? No, I can hear her too. Oh, okay. That is weird. Can that you? When they can. Can yeah, you repeat go ahead, my me, question? Tell me your question. Go ahead. Okay. So um, I would like to ask Topia if um, she see in my future if I would be like a nanny or something for children or maybe even hybrid children, if I could do that. Oh. Okay. Um, she'd like, Jasmina would like to know, Topia, if you see for her that in her, what we would call our future time, um, that she is a nanny with the hybrid children. She knows that. She I know she already knows the answer, and so do you, right? <laughs> well, she knows that she's going to get for the colonies. <laughs> that she doesn't <laughs> come to us. And Desmina has a beautiful voice. She sings like me. <laughs> That's nice. I hope we can sing together. Is there any more colors? Oh, what's your favorite color, Jasmina? Uh, it changes, but let's say blue. Okay, Jasmina. Jasmina's favorite color is blue, also, but sometimes it changes. Wow. This is easy. With a blue bunch. Yeah. Hi, Blue. Blues of all hues. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay, well, I think I have to go. Okay, send love to Vanita and the rest of your classmates and anyone else. And Mabel. Yeah. Don't forget Mabel. Yeah. Mabel, Mabel. She wants to say, I love you all. We love you. We love you. I love you all too. Thank you again for having me. Come and visit us anytime you want to in your spiritual time. Thank you. And and I'll come back one day soon. Karen's back. Karen, would you like to give um, Topia your favorite color? Karen. Mm, okay. My favorite color is the blue that the sky becomes when it's mixed with gray and it's all the different, you know, different hues of blue. So it goes from like bright blue to sort of dark gray in a mix. It's not one color, it's multiple colors. Hues of blue, how? What an echo. Yeah, everybody yeah. else said blue as well. <laughs> Except, yeah. Because we look to the sky. Bianca said purple. Oh, yes, yes. Mm. I used oh. to like purple, pink and purple when I was a kid, and now it's blue. Yeah. That's nice. Thank you for telling me, everybody. <laughs> You're welcome. Thank you for coming. Thank you for coming. Thank you. You're welcome. I'll go now. I love so. Oh, and kisses, yes, kisses, kisses. Bye. Bye. Bye, sweetie. Hugs and kisses. Mm.